Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about Ancestry DNA. Specifically, this video is for those of you who have uh, taken an Ancestry DNA test or have one in your hot little hands and are anxiously awaiting your results. For those of you who've already taken a test, this video might be a great thing to share with those of your family members and friends who find themselves in the position of anxiously waiting for their results. So we're just going to briefly cover some things you can do while you're waiting for your results so that you can get the most out of your experience once your results come in. Also at the end, just share a couple of little more advanced tips if you're interested in going a little bit further and then we'll wrap up with some resources where you can go to learn more if you so desire. So let's go ahead and dive in. First, um, let's just talk about checking the status of your test. One of the questions we get most often around here is, where are my results? Uh, and I understand how anxious it can be. Now, typically, results take an average of six to eight weeks to fully process. And so you need to keep that in mind. Now, that's the typical situation. Sometimes they may come back faster. Sometimes they may take longer. And there are a lot of different variables that play into that but you can keep track of the status of your test. You can check it any time. You just log into Ancestry using the same email that you used when you activated your DNA kit. Click on the DNA button there in the Ancestry header and you'll see a status update. Now this particular test that I did the screenshot for here was just activated today. Today is National DNA Day, April 25th. Uh, and so that uh, this test just simply says activated. But once you then mail the test in and we log it into our system, the status will change to arrived. Now it could sit in that arrived status for a while, waiting for space to open up at the lab. But once it goes into actual processing at the lab, the status will change to lab processing. And then um, you'll get notification when it's done processing. And that is when you'll have your results available to you. And again, those results will come just by logging into Ancestry and clicking on that DNA button. Now, if you've given us your email address when you uh, logged in and that, or when you activated your test and that's an email that you check regularly, you will receive email updates um, as your test progresses through these various stages. So that's how you keep on track of that. Remember again, average processing time is about six to eight weeks. So if you're not at that eight week point yet. Don't give up hope. <laughs> um, if you've passed the eight week point, um, you might want to just again log in here and check your status. If it's in the lab, um, just know that it's in process. If you're past that eight weeks and it's not in lab processing yet, you are free to give us a call. Or if you come here to the DNA tab and you don't see any status at all, one of the things we sometimes see happen is sometimes people um, activate their kit with a different email than the one they typically use, and so that can cause a little bit of confusion, and we can clear all that up for you. So that's how you keep track of where your test is at through the process. Now, another thing you're going to want to do while you're waiting for your DNA results is to start a family tree. It is completely free to do this. You do not have to have an Ancestry.com subscription uh, to start your family tree. The idea is you want to start entering what you know about your ancestry so that when your results come in, you can start to make some more discoveries and you're ready to do that. One of the things that you're going to get in your results, and it's a reason a lot of you probably took the test, is your ethnicity estimate. We're going to give you an estimate of where in the world your DNA comes from after we've compared your DNA to a reference panel of people from 26 regions around the world. We're also going to provide you with some genetic communities. So uh, ethnicity estimates look at where your DNA may have been 500 or 1,000 years ago. Genetic communities is where your ancestors were likely living within the last 100 to 200 years. Years. So that's one piece of your DNA results. The other part of your DNA results you're going to get is the cousin matching. So we take your DNA as kind of a secondary process after we do that ethnicity estimate and we compare it against the four million people in the Ancestry database who've already taken the Ancestry DNA test. 
And if you share a significant amount of DNA with any of those people, we will put them on your match list. And based on how much DNA you share with them, we'll be able to predict how closely or distantly you are related to those individuals. So be sure when you get your results back to check out that match list, not just those ethnicity results. That match list is going to help you discover more about your ancestry. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but that's why starting a family tree is so important because you're going to be able to then more quickly understand how you're related to these matches or where some of those matches might be able to help you extend your family tree. So on your DNA homepage, if you don't have a tree online, you're gonna see this little widget here, start a family tree. You just start by clicking on this um, person right here, that's you, and you're gonna enter what you know about yourself now. One of the things you need to know is the information about living people is actually kept privatized on Ancestry. So you'll be able to see it because it's your tree, but nobody else is gonna be able to see the information about living people in your family tree. Once you start entering information about maybe grandparents or great-grandparents who are deceased, that information then becomes available for others. And you want it to be because those deceased great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, that may be where some of those connections are made with some of those genetic cousins. So you enter yourself and then you enter what you know about your father and you enter what you know about your mother. Some of you may know a lot about them. You may know exactly when and where they were born. Some of you may not even know who your biological parents are. So just enter what you know. And then once you've done that, um, you started this tree, do the same thing for your grandparents. Whatever you know about your four grandparents. One little genealogy tip for you is we always enter women by their maiden names. That helps us keep track of the family lines. A lot of times we get stuck in our head, well, I'm tracing my name, but every time a woman marries into that family, typically she brings another name into the family tree with her. So keep in mind, always enter women with their maiden names. Enter what you know about your four grandparents. If some of you are lucky enough to have information about your great grandparents, go ahead and enter that as well. So enter as much or as little as you know, but the idea is just to get a little something in there to get you started making some of those connections as soon as your results come in. Now, once you have built that tree, go back to your DNA page. There's going to be a settings button in the top right hand corner. Go ahead and click on that. Scroll down a little bit on that page and you're going to see a section entitled family tree linking. You're going to want to go ahead and click link to tree. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, tell the system that as soon as your DNA results come in, we want to now take those DNA results and compare them to what's in your tree. So your DNA results are created independent of any tree data. It's actually entirely scientific looking at what is in your genetics. But then once we link it up with that tree data, it becomes a really powerful experience for discovering more about your family history. So go ahead and just, you want to link it to your tree and you want to link it to you. If you're the one who took the DNA test, you're gonna link it to you in the tree. Now, I'll give you um, a little bit of an example in my tree. I, I've taken the DNA test, so I have a test link to myself. I've tested both of my parents. I've tested my one living grandparent. I've tested aunts and uncles. So I've tested several people in my tree. They're all linked to the same tree, but they're linked to who they are or where they are in my family tree. That might not make a whole lot of sense to you right now, but I promise it will as you dive in and, and start to explore it a little bit. Now, the other thing that you can do while you're waiting for your results is you can complete your Ancestry profile. If you didn't have an Ancestry account before you took the DNA test, you now do. Um, you have what's called a free guest account. So you've taken the DNA test, you're waiting for your results, you don't have a paid subscription to Ancestry, but you still have a profile. And one of the things that I would encourage you to do, again, you'll find this widget on your DNA homepage, is to complete your DNA profile. Go ahead and throw in a photo. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a photo of yourself. Uh, it could be a picture of your cat. I think mine is a picture of my feet because I'm the barefoot genealogist. Um, but what we've discovered is that people who have profile photos, the um, incidence of people contacting them or wanting to work with them um, goes way, way up because it's not just the generic photo. Uh, you know this is true based on your social media experience, right? If, you've, if you're on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, anybody who has a generic photo um, or the default photo, 
we kind of think they don't know what they're doing <laughs> or that, that they might not be as active on that platform. Uh, and so we're less likely to contact them. Same thing in Ancestry. If you add a photo, people are more likely to reach out to you and say, hey cousin, I saw that you showed up on my match list as a third cousin. I'd love to you know, figure out who our common great great grandparents are. So go ahead and add a photo. You can also just add some basic information about yourself, um, you know, maybe a state or a country where you live, um, some maybe maybe add a little note about the fact that you're uh, brand new to this that will uh, make people a little bit more excited to work with you and so add some of that basic profile information whatever you feel comfortable with um, that will maybe encourage people to talk to you a little bit more Okay, now here we're gonna get a little bit more advanced. So again, if you're brand new to family history, if you're brand new to DNA, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I just kinda want you to dip your toe in the water a little bit, start to think about some of the possibilities. So this is my family tree, and um, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have uh, had the benefit of having parents who are interested in family history, and great aunts and uncles who helped me provide a lot of, provided a lot of information for me and for my family. And so I've got this really well fleshed out gorgeous family tree yours may just have a few people in it but I want you to start thinking about this match list that you're gonna get back with your ancestry DNA results you're gonna get back this match list and you you might have second cousins and third cousins and fourth cousins on that match list other people who have taken the DNA test who are related to you if they show up on your match list they're related to you but the key then, or the puzzle that's fun to figure out, is how exactly they're related to you. <coughs> Excuse me. So one of the things that you might need to start wrapping your head around is what exactly some of those relationships are. Now last week, um, the Barefoot Genealogist show was about cousin relationships. So I would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and check that video out. Um, I just want to do just a brief explanation of that so that you, you can start, again, like I said, start to wrap your head around it. So if somebody is my sibling, that means that we have the same parents. If somebody is my first cousin, that means we have the same grandparents. So these are my four grandparents here. And then if somebody is my Second cousin, that means we have the same great-grandparents, so it would be uh, one of these couples here in this column, starting with Frederick and Lillian. And if someone is my um, third cousin, we would have the same, a, a same set of great-great-grandparents. So somebody starting in this column here with Park and Carrie, one of these couples. So when you get your DNA match list back, if you've got second cousins or third cousins, what that means is they have a common set of ancestors with you. And if you don't know about these people, the good news is maybe they do, or maybe you have information that they don't, or maybe you both have pieces of the puzzle and by putting them together, you get the whole story. And so one of the really cool things about Ancestry DNA is that it helps you uncover information about you and, and how you came to be and all of the pieces of DNA that have filtered down through time to make you you. And that's so exciting. Um, even more exciting for me is to then take that next step into those cousin matches and to start looking at, okay, exactly who were the people that passed this DNA on to me and where did they come from and what were their stories. And so, again, if you find yourself getting anxious while you're waiting for your DNA results, one of the other things that you can do is reach out to some of those living family members who might have more information to add to your family tree. So if your parents are still living, if you have grandparents still living, aunts and uncles, great aunts and uncles, if your parents have cousins still living, uh, reach out to those people, you know, drop them a note, uh, send them an email, give them a call, and just let them know that you're, you've embarked on this really cool journey to discover more about yourself and your ancestry and see if they're willing to share some information about what they remember about their parents and their grandparents. And you'll quickly discover that uh, if you show a little bit of interest, people are gonna be willing to share some of those family stories with you. And you might even uncover a family mystery or two. Another thing you might wanna do while you have those people on the hook is invite them to take a DNA test. I mentioned I've tested both of my parents and my living grandmother. 
Well, that's because I only got 50% of my parents' DNA, which means they have 50% of their DNA that I didn't get. And the same thing's true with my grandma. She only gave my dad 50% of her DNA, which means she has 50% of her DNA that he didn't get. So wherever possible, you always want to test those oldest living generations because they're going to have DNA that you didn't. It's going to give you a little bit deeper look into your ancestry, it's going to give you some more of those cousin matches to work with to make some of those more discoveries. Well, I mentioned that we do have a YouTube channel here. That's probably where you're watching this video. Um, our YouTube channel has a couple of playlists you might be interested in. We do have one playlist called Ancestry DNA, where I actually walk through some details once you get your results. You can dive in a little bit deeper and work with those results, and I share some of my tips and tricks for discovering exactly how we're related to those DNA matches, how we can find who those common ancestors are. There's also a playlist on the Ancestry YouTube channel called Desktop Education. So if you find yourself building your family tree and you want to get an Ancestry subscription and start digging into some of those records and making some discoveries for yourself, uh, I've got lots of videos out there that show you how to do that. Well, that is all I have planned for you today. For those of you who are anxiously waiting for your DNA results, I promise you it will be worth the wait. I would love to hear, once you get your results back, what exciting discoveries you have made. Were there any surprises in your results? Did it come out exactly like the family stories have always told you it would? Be sure to leave a comment here on the YouTube channel. And for those of you who are old pros at Ancestry DNA, please use this video to share with your friends and family as they are brand new to family history to get them excited and headed onto this little journey on the right track. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.